Hello, Jalen. Welcome to the media Zoom. Hello, Got some yeah, questions no. for you. Good. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, Gabe Bach from TexAgs.com. Jalen, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? Doing well. Hey, could first walk us through that one-handed catch on third down. How in the world did you hold on to that football? <laughs> well, I ran off the ball and uh, I practice that. I practice that catch every day in practice. You know, one-handers, over the shoulders. Uh, I, pra I practice a lot of different ways of catching the ball. So when it happened, it was just like second nature. Put my hand out and catch it. How much better are you getting in the blocking game and just being a, a big part of the run game? And how much fun is it to block for a guy like Isaiah Spiller with the physicality he brings out there? Man, that dude is a dog. He is a real dog. And I'm so proud of the way he stepped up since last year. He was a dog last year, but he's shown that he can run against any defense. You choose any defense in the country. And um, my blocking, I feel like my blocking has grown a, a lot since last year. Um, it's more of a, I feel a lot more aggressive. And um, it's, it, blocking is pretty much confidence. Uh, I'm big, so I got to start using my big body to hit people. So. All right, let's go to Tyler Shaw from KBTX. Hey, Jalen, uh, what does it say about this offense, the, the fact that, uh, your quarterback, Kellen Mond, got SEC Offensive Player of the Week. And uh, it's been almost two years since an Aggie has gotten that honor. And you know, just what does it say about you guys as a whole and Kellen? Well, it can show that our offense is really growing. Um, even the, all the young players that we have, they're stepping up to the plate and they're um, stepping in where people left off, you know what I'm saying? So, and then Kellen, Kellen is um, – He's grown a lot. He has grown a lot. And I knew he had it in him to uh, have that performance, and I'm glad he did it. And we really needed it. He's a, a leader, a very vocal leader, and he has so much passion for the game. I'm so I'm so happy to have him as my quarterback. Thank you. Next up is Shion from Dave Campbell's Texas Football, and then Mike Lucas. Hey, Jalen. Uh you know, so obviously being a second year player uh, coming in with Isaiah Spiller too, how have you guys kind of prepared to play in the SEC and play such big roles right away? Uh, it would definitely be Coach Schmidt. Coach Schmidt and Coach Fisher definitely got us right in the weight room. Coach Fisher pushes us just like any other player, just like he pushes Kellen, just like he pushes Buddy. He trained, he trained in our minds to be, try to be the best player on the field and uh, we got to be ready for SEC ball. So. When it comes, we, me and Isaiah feel like we're ready, for sure. Was there a point uh, last season when it became really clear that Isaiah had a chance to be really special right away? Oh, I, I saw it in practice. I saw it in uh, fall camp and spring ball. Like, he's a he's a great player. He's a great player, and I knew he could play with the best of them. But definitely a South Carolina game, for sure. That was a great game. Thank you. All right, let's go to Mike Lucas from KAGS and then Brenton Zwerma. Hey, Jalen, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. How about you? Good. Hey, when you look around the SEC, Jalen, teams are putting up 40, 50 points now on pretty much a regular basis. Do you feel like this A&M offense is capable of that, especially coming off what y'all did on Saturday against Florida? Oh, yes. We're most definitely capable of that. Coach Fisher's offense is amazing. It's just there's a lot of different aspects that go into it. And once we all click, once – Kellen makes throws once we make catches, once we make blocks. And if everybody's clicking on the – if everybody's clicking, then we could definitely put up points against anybody. And I have a real quick follow-up. You say when everyone's clicking, it obviously clicked on, on Saturday. What, what hadn't clicked in some of the previous games that kind of prohibited you guys from putting up as many points? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Just mental mistakes. Uh, miss a block, miss a throw, drop a ball. Stuff like that that we just weren't clicking on, but um, we could definitely put we definitely put it together. It's, it's all offense is confidence. You got to have a lot of confidence playing this in this league, and once you get that confidence, it's hard to put it out. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's go to Brent Zorman from the Houston Chronicle, and then Justin Woodard. Jalen, going back to your Dickinson days, what was it that you ultimately decided to choose? Uh, football over basketball. I know you're a basketball player as well, and also why Texas A&M? Uh, I played football ever since I was little. I played since I was a kid, so um, I knew I knew for sure once I started getting offers uh, all around the all around the country, then I was going to pick football. 
Uh, I'm a pretty good basketball player, though, I would say. <laughs> but um, I'm sorry, what was that second question? Just why, take, why ultimately Texas A&M? Coach Fisher. Coach Fisher and Coach Fisher's offense. And it's such like an atmosphere around Texas A&M University that I love. It's close to home. My family come to every game. Um, it's just a warm feeling that you get when you come to College Station. So, yeah, that's why I love Texas A&M. Hey, you tweeted um, y'all felt disrespected right before the game by Florida. What was that in relation to? Oh, um, they, they just talk a lot, talking trash, you know. That's what every team does. But it just, it was very disrespectful. But, you know, that's football. Last one. Yeah, it's your last one for me. What is the draw of Call of Duty? The Marvin said you play it all the time. And how can that help you in football? <laughs> well, in Call of Duty, you have to have good hand-eye coordination. And I, <laughs> I, feel like <laughs> I feel like I have to when you catch a ball. So I guess you can tie that into football somehow. <laughs> I'll tell my kids that. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's go to Justin Woodard and then Zach Taylor. Yeah, and you guys now are, are 16 and one under Jimbo when you rush for uh, more than 150 yards. When you see Isaiah get going, the running game get going, what, what's that do for you guys as a whole? Oh, it gets all of us going because if if we're all making blocks and we're all, it's an attitude. It's all an attitude. We when we all have a certain attitude and a certain goal, and we're all clicking, we can we can we can do anything we want to do. The only thing that stops that can stop us is ourselves. So when we see Isaiah running running the ball like he does, man, it gets all of us going. You saw all of us uh, run off the sideline to go celebrate. It was really good. But in terms of play action, for you over the middle or, or running routes when you have not as much traffic back there when people are coming down biting on the run, what does that do for you? Oh, guys? yeah. Once Isaiah gets about three or four three or four runs that go for about 20, 30 yards, they'll, the linebackers start biting, the safety start coming down, and you – that's what you use the tight end for a lot is to get them lost in the lost in the uh, play. So that, that's what got me open on a few plays is Isaiah's running and Anais is running. All right, let's go to Zach Taylor from WTAW and then Robert Cessna. Hey, Jalen, a lot was made about Kyle Pitts uh, over at Florida before the game, and, and not a lot of national folks might have been uh, mentioning your name along with him. But for you personally, do you feel like you're the best tight end in the SEC? Oh yeah, it's uh, this year is not over, so we we'll just have to we we'll just have to see where I fall. But Kyle Pitts is a great player, and he's a great he's a great tight end. He receives the ball, he goes up and gets it. So that's somebody actually I look up to in in terms of receiving. Uh, that dude's doing great this year, and I hope he does great things. Do you feel like you get enough attention at tight end? Oh yeah, I get love. I <laughs> I get enough love for sure. Okay, thanks. All right, let's go to Robert Sessner from the Brian Eagle and then Alex Miller. Jalen, when you look, you've only had one road game under these COVID restrictions. So I was wondering, look back in that Alabama game, do you find the atmosphere easier for the road team to play and have success compared to your road road games last year? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, not having all, all the Alabama's fans in there was um, – didn't make it as hard on offense just because it wasn't as loud. You know, we had to listen to cadences and stuff like that. So, um, we it just was it just wasn't as loud. So the fans are the fans are a big big factor in the game. And when they're not when they're not when not, not as much of them are there, then it's easier. Have some of your teammates told you about the cowbells since uh, you haven't been to Mississippi State yet? I'm sorry, say that one more time. Have some of your teammates told you about the cowbells that Mississippi State's famous for since you have? Oh, they do. Yeah, their fans are in cowbells. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, that's definitely going to be loud. Um, <laughs> we'll just have to see how that goes. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. We uh, got a couple more questions. Alex Miller and then Gabe Bach to wrap us up. Hey, Jalen, how tough is it to lose a guy like Caleb Chapman after the big game that he had on Saturday? It's a, it's a big loss, and um, I've seen him grown ever since high school. I've uh, played against him in high school, and I knew he was a dog when he came here. Um, he's finally getting his chance to shine, and for something like that to happen, it sucks, but, I mean, it's football. Uh, it 
gives other players platforms to step up and show what they got. But it's a tough loss to lose, especially somebody that go up and get the ball like he can. And he's a game changer. All right, we'll wrap it up with Gabe Bach from TexAx.com. Hey, Jalen, we understand your dad was one heck of a player at Dickinson High School. You got a Heisman winner from Dickinson. Where do you see your your brothers all play there? Where do you see yourself in terms of the greatest players from Dickinson and when all said and done? What do you think you'd have to do from this point to for people from Dickinson to consider you the best? Um, well, the Heisman Trophy winner, that's hard to go by. Uh, not a lot of them come out of anywhere, honestly. So. Um, I, I look up to Andre Ware and I look up to my dad and um, hopefully it's really an honor just to be my name put next to them on, on the Hall of Honor at Dickinson uh, someday I hope I hope but um, it's just my honor being it's, it's an honor being in the same conversation as them and um, yeah I'm humble it's a humble experience you know all right that's all the questions for you thank you Jalen thank you well done